So good afternoon, folks. A lovely day. The weather's shining. We've got a lovely person on the line here today for our business spotlight. And we have Aoife Lawler from Innovate Creative Academy. Aoife, you're very welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. You look like you're enjoying the sun, but I hope you're the window open there, etc. So can you tell all of our listeners and viewers here, what is it that you guys do in Innovation Creative Academy and how long have you been doing it? Um, okay, so Innovate Creative Academy, essentially we make and market um, products, uh, mostly children's products. Um, so I spent 16 years actually working in the HSE um, here in Ireland. Um, and then in 2013, myself and my husband and a friend of ours um, created a company called the Irish Fairy Door Company, um, which was a huge success here in Ireland um, and internationally. It was brilliant. And then in 2018, we had a parting of ways and um, myself and Gavin set up Innovate Creative Academy. And the reason I suppose that suited myself and Gavin was because by nature of the Irish Fairy Door Company, we were kind of limited as to what scope of products we could go in. Um, and ideas just were flowing and in abundance. So we just decided this this is a good juncture for us to exit and um, look at all the other ideas we had building. Um, and that's what we did. So basically, that's what we do. We come up with concepts. We go all the way through to prototyping, all the way through to Asian production. Um, and we sell FOB business and all that sort of different different acronym businesses we do. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, sounds very interesting. So I'm not sure <laughs> was, it wasn't yourself and Gavin that were students making a split there. That's good to hear. So yeah. lots of other stuff there. So obviously, tell me, so who would a good customer be for you? Ooh, um, so I suppose Gavin, we had the benefit of Gavin when he was in Fairy Door, was in charge of all the sales internationally um, and nationally. But I suppose in hindsight, one of the gifts we got without realizing was his connections. Um, so funny enough, it's actually easier as a small product building business to land big, big clients, if you like, is the best we can do. It's what we all aim for. And mm -hmm. um, that there's a certain amount of risk that comes with that because your payment and your length, your longevity to get into end is long. Mm -hmm. um, but it is the kind of customer that we really want to we want. We want our product on shelves and we want to get it as high a reaching customers we can so that's why i mentioned to you tom there just before we came on that we're we've just recently been listed with walmart which is Yay. massive it's absolute yeah it's absolute like mind-boggling like when your po arrives you're like oh my god it's amazing <laughs> and then it's like oh holy god we have a lot of work to do a lot of work to do to make this actually come to fruition you know so we're so the take my listeners there guys what you said was walmart one of the biggest retailers yes. in the world that is magnificent. Yes. Congratulations. Well, listen, it's maybe premature, as I said, because the work is already uh -huh. starting, but the yeah. PO has landed. And like with everything, Tom, you spend years and years of getting absolutely nowhere and every door closing your face. Yeah. And yeah. then all of a sudden it opens and then you have another email, I think, I think maybe within two or three days of Walmart from Target. Of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> like nothing, nothing, and then it's all at once. So listen, it's a good complaint, but... Yes. Be realistic about it. it's a lot of work you know uh, well look congratulations it's, you're on a start i hope it all, all goes through the process now when you get you're working there so tell me obviously the big c word covid came about in the last few years yes. um what was the biggest impact on you because of covid absolutely ground zero is how i would describe it so we work really closely with our Asian partners, always have, and that's another relationship we had the benefit of bringing with us through our commercial director, Dave Thomas. Um, in November 2019, it was over there. And we were, he basically stopped working on our product and I started asking us to send face masks because he couldn't get them in China. And at that time, we thought, God, what's happening in China? Never believed, like every Irish person, never believed it would hit our island. Um, and I can honestly say by March 2020, I was on a put payment because our business was zero, it's absolutely not, yeah. Yeah. zero. Not even a fraction would look at making anything for you because everybody just switched what they were doing. Um, I think what happened for us is we managed to bring PPE in for the HSC. Um, and the only reason I think we were able to do that because when panic hit, 
they looked at companies that had existing relationships or they had that, you know, that had that ability to bring product in seamlessly because mm -hmm. they'd done it before. Yeah. And I think that that saved us. And um, we oh. did that for the yeah, we did that for the HSC absolutely completely out of our remit. But as I said to you, Dave Thomas, who's our commercial director, he has an ability for the finite detail. I think yes. Yeah, so he was able to go, okay, this is exactly what you need. Never heard of it before. Yeah. He was able to absorb all that detail, go to the partners we have, which we trusted and had a long relationship with, and they were able to bring that in. And honest to God, for 12 months, that's... That was a save. That, 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 that pivot actually set you up for a while. Yeah, fantastic. Well, it meant we broke even rather than broke down, you know? So yeah, yeah. It, was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a really unexpected turn, but there you go. Yeah. Absolutely. That's fantastic. So tell me, what's the biggest learning you've had so far as a business owner? That you're always last. That we, we, regardless of what happens, so we're chasing these big contracts and it sounds amazing. God, it sounds so great, but we're chasing these big contracts down um, and, and we're landing them. But you are last on the food chain. So I have to somehow make my life and all my life ends meet in order to get to the end line of these contracts. And that's probably, see, even, even in fairy door times, that's my biggest learning is that it's great and you can do a lot of hand waving and hand shaking and oh my God, we're such a success on paper, but you really, really need to be prepared to be last. Interesting, interesting. And tell me, when you were growing up, Eva, is this what you always wanted yeah. to do? Ah, Absolutely not. Now, my yeah. father was a, an entrepreneur and uh, had his own business for 40 years. Um, and I don't know, my siblings went to work for him, pretty much all of them, actually. And I was fairly hell-bent on getting this steady, permanent, pensionable job. So I went to the HSC. I went to college and then I went to the HSC. And I worked in adult mental health day services. But I suppose, although I did the job quite well, I I had this... I had this unrealistic want and need in me to create. I didn't know how and why or where this came from, yeah. but I just did. And certain things, certain ideas just ignited something in me, like fairy doors, the first one, I suppose. I couldn't sleep at night thinking about what I could do with this idea. <laughs> and I suppose it's like anything. Some things are meant for you. And I suppose that was the time where I had to jump out of the permanent pensionable job and take this leap. And I did. And I'm grateful I did. Um, but I never dreamt ever of working for myself. And now I can tell you it's all I think about. And I don't ever want to work for anyone else. So fantastic. Fantastic. So I was yeah. just asking you there, would who would who would have been the best coach you ever had? I have to ask you this question in the business I'm in. So who would have been the best coach? Would it have been your father? Would it have been a little peer or who else? I think my dad certainly when I was young, I obviously absorbed things that I wasn't aware I was absorbing, you know, so that that written guile that he had and he mm -hmm. he does have I definitely took that in business okay this is an interesting one in business I will tell you I have been badly treated by people and they have taught me something okay. um I will also tell you there's certain people they're kind of like marmite um and like I know I can go to him in particular and he will give me the absolute oh my god dead down the line whether I want to hear it or not yeah. um, and there's another woman I do business with um, through I age and stuff and I know I can go to her and she's a trusted resource of mine so I'm, I wouldn't say it's one person in particular and my husband oh my god if I could get you to talk to Gavin Waller if ever the world needed to understand unwavering belief absolute determination like just the times i just say come on we just go come on we just go work at tesco i don't yeah. care where we work just yeah, let's go yeah, work yeah, yeah, and yeah. he he looks at me like this what, what are you talking about like this there's absolutely no if buts or ands as to what Fantastic. he is doing and how he's meant to be doing it so like, it sounds like you're a good mix there and he provided the drive yeah. I do. I, I certainly have I certainly have the good, bad, and the ugly, you know. And as I said <laughs> to you, people that I, I never ever want to see again in my life, but yeah. they've taught me something. And well, there you go. We learn, we learn as we go along. So tell me, exactly. please then, what does the future look like for you? And what do you think the biggest challenges are that you're going to face? 
Uh, the future for us, I'm fairly confident we're going to get to where we need to be. Like we're, we want to be product builders. We have excellent relationships now at the moment where, where it's really the tables have turned, where buyers are now saying, God, you really can actually change things the way you want. Could you make me this? And we never foresaw that. But that's if we can if we can perfect what we're what we seem to be on the cusp of, it's amazing. It's all we ever wanted. Um a biggest challenge at the moment, I think, for anyone for what we do and and the amount of runway you need to get to the end, mm -hmm. it's always going to be cash flow, always, because mm -hmm. you you we're selling a big dream picture and although we're seeing the results of it now all that space in between all those all that space has to be accounted for and, and you know and our life has to go on and we have children and all those things have to be yeah, yeah. covered um that said tom you couldn't you couldn't get me to do anything else like i don't know what's wrong with us we're wired different you know what? <laughs> I don't you, know sound, what you sound like. very positive now this is great this sounds like a great great story <laughs> So can we ask just on behalf of some of the people who are in, the, in small businesses here, what would you say yeah. to them in thinking of starting their own business? I would say, and I do say, I do get a lot of people that would ask me about this, you know, I'd say be realistic. Oh my God, don't have any regrets. Like my greatest worry in life is that I get to that age and I go, God, I wish I'd done that. You know, I don't, yeah, yeah. I th you need money, right? Don't be delusional. Yes. You need money. Everybody needs money. You need money and you need you need the people around you. You need to avoid the people that just want equity and they'll say they give you this and they give you that. And it, it's just, it's just, you, you create this messy cap table and it's just, mm. oh, you know, you, you need to be in control. You need to have your, the proper functions covered, like the finance and the sales and the marketing. Those either they are people or there's money for people in those roles because you know, friends, the gestures, the favors run out. You're never, you're never a priority if you're for, if you're a favor. You know, so I suppose that's why I just say to people: if we have the four pillars covered and you have the finances in place, you know, go for it. Like, you know, what's what's fantastic? What's what's there to <laughs> not be gained? Like, you know. Well, it sounds like you're a get up and go type of person. So, one <laughs> of the questions I'd ask: you, if you started your business again, what would you do differently? Oh, it's a really good question. If I started my business again, what would I do differently? Well, that's that's a really good question. Um, I don't know if I don't know if I would change anything we've done, right? Because genuinely, we are on the doorstep of something great here. Mm -hmm. I I think I think I'm going to answer this in a really silly way. I think I change me in a way because I have terrible imposter syndrome, really bad. I've called her Susan. I've named her Susan. I've done I've done tones for people and I've explained who Susan is. Um, and that's another conversation we can have. Yeah. But I'd learn I'd learn that she has a dial and I need to dial her down at times because she can disable me. She can she can cripple me with fear and anxiety and oh and and honestly, I I sometimes you just need to leap. And she Isn't doesn't do me the same. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's interesting. No, I, I have to say that's very well answered. I have to say that's uh, really interesting that, that you come out so honestly about that because a lot of people know it's there, but they don't acknowledge it. Uh, so that's interesting. That's very good. Yeah, yeah. So last, right. last question here. How would people contact uh, your business? I presume it's I-N-N-O-V, the number eight. Yeah. Me. So yeah. Your, your, your website would be innov 8 academy.com yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. In academy yeah creativeacademy.com we're mostly creative academy. Most, com. yeah most of our contacts come through linkedin funny enough um it's, it's where Excellent. we maintain the presence for the business and for ourselves um uh but people can contact us there no yeah that's that's the easiest way i suppose um and it's the easiest way the referrals because we tend to filter that ourselves you know sometimes yes. when it comes to other places that we're not necessarily looking at ourselves myself and gavin obviously i'm talking about now some people have often gone looking for us and never found us because we're a bit snobby and we spell our name l-a-w-l-e-r yeah <laughs> that's a snobby <laughs> version is it <laughs> i don't know what it is i i married into this but like my god i'm so precious about that e and not that o yeah yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, but uh yeah no i'd say i'm most comfortable saying that to people because it is 
it's te- it's where we connected. It tends to be yes. the place I filter because I value I value my relationship. So I really mind that area myself. Yeah, yeah. Eva, I'm not going to take any more time. That was fantastic. Really enjoyed talking to you, and I wish you every success. You on the cusp of something potentially huge here. So I think we'd all be watching with great just, interest to see what happens. So don't forget yeah. to post something. So if anybody hasn't connected with you already, Eva Lawler. L A W E R guys, okay. L A W L E R, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Right. Did I say that? Yeah, E R. Um, so make sure you connect in, in, in with there. Eva, thank you so much, and have a great week. And looking, I, I will be following your your success on uh, LinkedIn and other routes.